Okay, again, um, hi everyone. Welcome to the LPS uh, session. Um, in this lecture, we are going to continue to look at uh, Python. Um, just as a, a recap, we covered uh, many things with Python. Um, as you may recall, we started with the, the basic data structures. We went through some of the control structures. We started talking about some of the advanced uh, data structures like tuples, um, lists, and then we went into the dictionary, essentially, which is the associated associative arrays. Um, then, um, in the last uh, lecture, we covered um, new items like lambda functions, which is like a function generator, and then we went over some of the uh, default functions that are provided. Um, with uh, as a part of Python, um, so um, I hope like I mean all those things are uh, clear. Um, today we will we will start with um, actually um, 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 another uh, section basically. Um, and, uh, this is um, we're going to talk about. Um, uh, The exception handling. So this is like when you have some exception generated in the inside the code. How do how does the program handle it? How do we handle it? Things like that. That's what uh, we we'll talk about. So the exception in general is a recognized type of error, and handling is what you do when that error happens. So the general syntax of uh, exception handling is. Uh, this um, call called try, very similar to a function, but uh, it's not a function; it's a predefined function. And then, basically, what we say is, um, we say try the code you want to run, except what are the exceptions? So, exception one, and then if it's exception one, so for that, what is the block of the code? Then we do exception two, and then what do we do? And then all the way up to the last exception, which is exception n. Um, and then we specify that as variable one. So essentially, like I mean, this is the general syntax of uh, the exception handling. So now, um, what this means is this code means is that if an error occurs, and if it is of exception type one, which is here, then we that the variable one it becomes an alias to the exception object. So that's specified here, and then this block of code starts executing. Exception one block executes. <clears throat> Otherwise, Python tries the exception types two all the way up to n until the exception is caught, or else. The program stops with an unhandled exception. The as variable is an optional uh, one, and uh, it, this will not work with uh, order Python. So this is like three and above. So let's look at a quick example. Um, So value error dot um, actually this should be py. <coughs> so here we say try i equal to int of snakes and then print the integer is something except value errors. Here we omitted that as variable print oops invalid value. Now there can be other exceptions. Um, one of the exception is this end of file exception.
end of file error is raised at the end of the file. The index error happens if we use an invalid index for a string or a collection. Example if we try to get argv1 there is only one command line argument which is basically like argv0 then it generates an um, index error. And then there is also another one is called type error which is if you are trying to uh, compare two um, different types incomparable types like uh, string versus um, uh, float or something like that. So again that is the type error. So essentially like I mean so a, in general like I mean a value error uh, end of file error and then um, uh, index error and then the type error. So these are the general exceptions um, so that uh, you want to keep in mind. Now let us look at uh, some of the Python modules. So in this section we are going to talk about the basics of modules import and from um, import statements and then how do we change data inside the model we will also talk about reloading the modules then we will talk about the module packages then um, name and main then finally how do we import uh, as a statement. So now let us look at uh, the, <coughs> the Python modules. So a couple of more things regarding the uh, before we go into the modules I want to also highlight some of the other things about uh, the exceptions. So we talked about some of the things basically. Um, so the other ones uh, essentially uh, you can also have standard error which is um, basically the um, 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 which can be like in, um, any all the built in exceptions except the stop iteration generator exit keyboard interrupt things like that or system exit they are all the standard uh, error and then we all can also get an arithmetic error um, which is uh, um, essentially like I mean um, various types of uh, arithmetic uh, 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 operations which, which can be generated from the arithmetic operation like overflow error zero division error or floating point error. And then there is also buffer error which is essentially like I mean uh, and the buffer related operations cannot be performed you can get a buffer error. And then there is also lookup error which is uh, the index error is one of them essentially or even the key error is also the other one which is always classified under lookup error. <clears throat> and then the things like um, IO error even this end of file error these are all under the environment error which is uh, concerning with outside uh, Python system. So IO error, OS error can also be with an environment. And there are some assertion errors basically when an assert statement fails, attribute errors um, when uh, an um, attribute reference or attribute assignment fails. Um, we also have talked about the floating point error basically when the floating point uh, operation fails. And then there is the generator exit in general. So all these things are comes under the exception class of um, the in Python. Uh, so they they are basically like there is a basically it is a base class that is for all the exceptions. <coughs> So now let us look at um, 
uh, the modules uh, Python modules. So, what is a module? First of all, each file in a in Python is considered a module. So, this module actually, like I mean, we saw it in Perl as well as uh, actually in, in Tickle we didn't see that much, but in Perl we saw um, the modules essentially. Um, so. Um, <coughs> Everything within the the file um, is encap encapsulated within a namespace, which is basically the name of the file. Okay, so um, to access code in another module, another file, um, we need to import that file and then access the functions or the data of that module. We can do it by prefixing with the name of the module followed by a period. Um, but to import a module, we just uh, use the um, the function called import and with the argument as uh, sys. So one thing you notice basically like there is no file suffix for this particular module. We can also import user defined modules or some standard modules like sys and random. So in this case like sys is a um, like a standard module, but you can also like to user defined modules. Any Python program needs one top level file which imports any other needed modules. So, the way it is organized as a top level file which imports other files. So, in the Python standard library, there are over 200 modules, and uh, um, so uh, essentially, like I mean, you can go to python.org and then you can consider, consult the Python library reference manual. And for all these different modules in the standard library, So now what does the import do essentially, so the import statement does uh, three things, it finds the file for the given module, it compiles into a byte code and runs the module code to build any objects basically whether it is a top level code um, um, and then variable initialization. The module name is only a simple name. Python also uses um, a module search path to find it, it will search the directory of the top level module uh, or the top level file uh, directories in the inside the environmental variable called the Python path and then the standard directories and then finally the directories list listed in any of the path files uh, that is in your directory. And then here it is basically like one directory per line in a plain text file essentially that is how you want to specify the dot pth file. The path can be listed by printing sys dot path so if you say print sys dot path it will list the, the path. So here is an example for printing the command line argument print argv.perl so here we import the sys and then the command options are sys.argv and then basically like for I the initialize the variable i and then for command in command options essentially which is all these ones we just print the argument i and then the command and then we just increment. So 
it basically prints um, um, once we specify this essentially like the arg zero is print arg v dot Perl and then test one and test two. Now there is another um, um, module called uh, random. So random also can be imported. So we import random, and then we say basically random dot rand integer between one and hundred. So this is essentially um, um, it. It's a it's a random number generator between one and zero. I mean sorry one and hundred. And uh, then we can print that, and then you can also like specify like a random dot choice, and then we can pass a list, and then uh, we can make it to print the dinner, and then it randomly picks one amongst the three. <coughs> so here we notice basically like uh, this random function, and we also say like rand in an int to make sure that this output of this one is an integer from these values and here we just specify simply like choice and then basically like the remain ones are strings and then essentially like I mean that gets printed out So now let us um, look at um, <coughs> the difference between import and from <coughs> from import basically so from this whole thing right so um, when we say import import brings in a whole new module essentially the whole module essentially and we need to qualify the names by module name so that is using this is rb but import from copies the names from the module into a current into the current module so no need to qualify them basically so um, we don't need to actually qualify with um, these uh, additional names on it so it is actually brought into the current module itself so um, and notice that actually these are full copies basically not links so um, essentially you can change and basically like it is not going to override anything any changes to the, um, the original ones so you have a your own copy and then your copy will be different from the one inside the module itself so here um, an example from module X we import junk and then we directly call junk we do not call as module x dot junk anymore so now when we specify this command the junk actually now gets transferred and then basically it is copied and kept it as part of your module and not part of the module x anymore and then you can say basically like uh, from module x import star that gets all the top level mod, mod names from module X. Now the change changing the data inside modules essentially. So you want to reassign a new value to fetch name from module uh, uh, from a module which does not change the module but changing the mutable variable from the module. Um, so essentially like I mean uh, from module x import x y when we say x is equal to 30 it does not change x in the module x so this is the something that we talked about earlier but if you put as y0 equal to 1 that actually changes y0 in module x because now it has no bearing of this 0 inside this particular um, your, your own module and it needs to go back 
to the um, um, the module X to find out what is Y zero and then uh, change that. So this is similar to like more exactly like the functions. So to actually change a global name in another file, um, we could use import without the from and qualify the variable. But again, this breaks the data encapsulation because now we say like module x dot x is thirty, and then um, any kind of uh, object encapsulation that uh, the module provides is completely wrong. Now, how do we reload modules? Um, the module's top-level code is only run the first time when the module gets imported. Subsequent imports do nothing basically. So the reload function forces the cell reload and rerun of that module. So you can use um, if there is a module changes while the program Python program is running. So essentially like I mean if you change the variable and basically you have to re-import the module then at the point you can use the reload and reload is passed an existing module object for example reload module X and then the module X must be must have been previously imported so it will not you cannot do an import with a reload command and then the reload changes module object in place basically like whatever that was imported it changes that essentially and it does not affect prior uh, from import statement so once they are copied into your own particular module those will not change even with the reload only the import the regular import will be the only one that uh, will change and they still point to the old objects if you do another uh, from import of course that will change basically after the reload. So now um, let us talk about the module packages. So when using the import we can give the directory path instead of a simple name. So the directory of a Python code is known as the package. So for example here um, import directory 1 dot directory 2 and then module. So or we can also say like from directory 1 dot directory 2 module import x. So essentially what that means is basically look for the file directory 1 slash directory 2 and then module dot file. And one thing is directory 1 must be within one of the directories in the Python path. So the Python path is now important similar to what we saw in regular uh, import modules. And uh, the other thing is also like directory 1 and directory 2 the, they should be simple names not the platform specific syntax that is c colon slash or backslash or whatever. Now underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot file um, these are some of the package files. Um, so when we use the Python packages basically the the directory path syntax for the imports each directory in the path needs to have a this underscore underscore in it underscore underscore dot pi file this file could be just blank basically I mean if it is um, it is nothing basically or if it is not blank the file contains the python code the first time python imports through the directory it will run the code in the the underscore underscore in it underscore underscore dot pi file. So in the directory one dot directory two module example, the namespace directory one dot directory two now exists, which contains all the names assigned by the directory twos um, underscore underscore in it underscore underscore pi file. The file can contain an underscore underscore all underscore underscore list which specifies what is exported by default when the directory is imported with the from statement.
So now this actually um, gives us um, another uh, concept of uh, data encapsulation. So by default names beginning with an underscore will not be copied in an uh, import statement. They can still be changed if accessed directly. So that's no issues. Alternatively, one can still one can list the names to be copied on import by assigning them to a list called underscore underscore all underscore underscore. So, for example, here we specify like underscore underscore all underscore underscore, and this list x1, y1, and z1, and to mean that basically import only these um, uh, this list is read only. Only like we need to import these these two basically x1, y1, and z1. And this list is a read only, and when it is using the from star syntax, so that is the one the from import uh, import from syntax that we saw. So this is uh, this list is read only when we use this from star. So that when you use the import from and then um, Star, it only imports these two, even though it may have many other. So now the same thing basically like underscore name underscore and underscore main underscore. So when a file is run as a top level program, its underscore name underscore is set to underscore main underscore when it starts. So this is how. Um, so this is the concept which is very similar in like C language. In C, always the execution starts with this um, function called main, uh, and it only executes that, and then any other functions are underneath that. Similarly, in Python, basically the underscore under, underscore name underscore is set to main when it starts, so that it runs that as the starting point. But if a file is imported the underscore name underscore is set to the name of the module as the importer sees it and can use this to package a module as a library but allow it to run as a standalone also by checking if the name the underscore name underscore is the same as underscore main underscore and do whatever basically that will run in the Standalone mode. So now the the next one is this import as. We can rename a module um, by using import long module name as short module name. Where the short name is just an alias for the original module name. We saw this thing in the very first slide when we did the um, uh, example for um, um, importing, where we said the import, or actually like in the, in the exception handling. Basically. So try, and then we say basically like an exception as variable one. So there, that long name is assigned to the short name essentially as with the using the as. So the same thing is applicable even to the import statement. So import long module name as short name, and then the short name is the alias for the name. Um, so when when we start using the syntax, basically like when we use the short name thereafter, and we don't have to specify the long name. We can also use the same um, as syntax for the from, basically. So from module import long name as the short name. That's another um, thing that we can do. Um, yeah, basically here the X or whatever, like which module. And we saw this uh, thing basically on the reload. The reload may not affect the from imports essentially. So when we do from copies, uh, so basically the from actually copies names the and does not retain the link back to the original model. So that's why if you do a reload, you won't get the new one for the those modules that are 
um, imported as from. So when the reload is run, it changes the module, but uh, not any copies that were made on the original from the module import uh, from module import X statement. If this is this becomes a problem, then we need to import the entire module and then just uh, use the name qualification, um, just like module dot x x x x x this um, that kind of a name instead of uh, this um, from statement. So now um, we come to the file form section. Here we are going to just talk about some basic file operations. So quick commands: How do we open a file? Uh, the command is open, and then we just say specify the file name and the mode. And whereas the file name is just a Python string, the mode is also a string, basically, and then it is um, string R for reading. Uh, w for writing and A for appending. So the basic operation is basically out file open out dot dat with write option, in file open input dot dat and then with the read option. Simple stuff uh, we saw this kind of thing both in tickle and Perl already. Um, and then some of the basic operations uh, so once we open the file. We specify input dot read, and then that uh, reads the whole file into a string. This also we saw like in uh, the previous examples. And then we can also read by number of bytes, essentially. Like so, that is again read n. The n specifies the number of bytes, so it reads so many bytes from the file and keeps it. And read line is to read the next line. And we can also specify read lines to read the files into a list of uh, strings. And then similarly for writing some output, basically we use the output dot write. And then uh, if we specify the string a, and then the string a is written into the form. And then we can say like write lines a to write a list of strings into the a. And then we use the close uh, function output dot close to close a file. Now, how do we redirect uh, the standard out? So the print statement normally go to the standard out. The standard output is basically the screen, um, and then we can actually um, redirect the std out into a file. So here we basically the import the sys module, and then we specify sys dot standard out is this particular file called output dot text, and we open it with the write option. Now when we specify the print message, it will not show up in your screen, but it directly goes into this output dot text. Alternatively, we can also uh, uh, print um, some things basically to a file. Using the print uh, double arrow, and then we specify the file and then the message. And then for this, the only condition is that the log file needs to be open. So here are some examples of file parsing. This file parsing, like I mean, we saw this in uh, Perl uh, a lot of times. So here, how do we do it in Python? We specify the in file, basically, like what is the in file with what kind of option. And then we start reading the lines basically. So the lines contain a list of uh, the strings of all the uh, the lines in the in the in this file. And then we can the after we read it, we can just close it. Now to print the line, essentially, like we use the for statement, and then this is the um, um, print line. And then that prints um, one line at a time. And then there is also like a shortcut uh, syntax to avoid the uh, read line calls. Basically, that is line by line.
so we open the the file um, and then basically like um, we so here um, once we specify the line by line essentially like I mean then we can just uh, um, read the lines one by one. So here we can directly read this uh, file and then uh, print those lines. So just to recap, today we saw um, uh, three major things basically. The first one is um, on the exception handling. How do we handle exceptions? And we covered many different types of exception. And in general, the, the syntax is like to just try and uh, catch essentially. Um, the try syntax is uh, for the exception handling. Uh, then we also covered the the various modules, module commands. Um, so we went through the basics of modules, how to import modules, how to use the from import uh, commands. Um, then we also talked about uh, various types of modules like the sys module and the random module and then uh, we went through like how do we reload modules what are the effects basically and then how do we define packages and then uh, the what are the uh, some rules that govern the package specification um, and then how do we actually change um, what gets imported and what gets uh, run. Um, and then we went through the file operations basically uh, how do we open the file, how do we uh, close the file, how do we open it as read only, how do we open it as write and then uh, how do we actually do operations essentially how do we read from a file and how do we write out into a file and then uh, also like how do we redirect some of the standard outs uh, uh, files and then um, we also went through the, the file parsing essentially. So. Um, that is pretty much it for uh, today, um, we will pick up uh, the stuff from uh, this point in the next class, uh, thank you very much.